Good morning, everybody. It seems like the church is going to tip. <laughs> Everyone is sitting on this side. So, um, you know, I've flown in a few puddle jumpers, you know, where the, the um, flight attendant makes sure everyone is evenly distributed. So if it feels like it's tipping, feel free to move to this side just in case. Welcome, everyone, to St. Mark's. Today is the 15th Sunday after Pentecost. I have a bunch of announcements. Council meeting after church today. Next Saturday is our mobile food pantry at First Trinity. We do it with um, St. Andrews. Uh, be there by 11. Um, volunteers are always needed. Uh, everything is pre-packed, so it's not a lot of moving around. It's just uh, distributing the boxes, so um, please be there. I will not be there because next Saturday I will be going down to Kearney to the installation of our new bishop at First Lutheran Church in Kearney. Um, I will be staying overnight, so next Sunday I will not be here. Yay! No one's clapping. <laughs> However, that does not mean you don't get to hear a sermon from me. I will be pre-recording it, pre-videoing it, so you still get me next week. There will be, since I am away, there will be no communion. Um, our fall dinners are starting, so for example... Uh, next uh, Sunday the 25th um, at First Trinity will be theirs after, after their worship. And then we have ours on October 16th, the third Sunday of October. There's a sign-up sheet in the back. They're asking for desserts, pies, and monetary donations. Um, any donations can be brought to the church office. Give them to Michaela and she will set them aside for that. Um, and then I got a message from Wade Milliken. His wife, Christy Schaefer Milligan, passed away September 13th, so keep that family in their prayers. Um, are there any um, other announcements? Anything? Oh, Leanne, yes, there's something coming up very soon. And the last few years, we have done at least 1,500 pieces of clothing and articles of, to give away. So it's a really big, important day. So any help with that. Any other announcements? So if you're able, please stand for our confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God of all mercy and consolation, come to, the, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and have given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In, in your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us in we, even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with the power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. Satisfied, the love of God is not denied. 
night. We come, we come to the hungry feast. We come to the hungry feast. Hungry for a world release from hungry folk of every kind. The poor in body, poor in mind. We come, we come to the hungry feast. We come to the hungry feast. Hungry that the hunger cease. And knowing though we eat our fill, the hunger will stay with us still. We come, we come. If you can take out your cranberry hymnals and follow along with the liturgy, it starts on page 175. on us, O oh Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy on us, O oh Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy on us, O oh Christ, have mercy. Christ have mercy on us, O Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy on us, O Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy on us, O Lord have mercy. Gloria, 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 Glory to God on high. Gloria, 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 Glory to God on high. And on earth, peace to God's people, Glory to God. And on earth, peace to God's people, Glory to God. Let us pray. God among us, we gather in the name of your Son to learn love for one another. Keep our feet from evil paths. Turn our minds to your wisdom and our hearts to the grace revealed in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Good morning. Good morning. The first reading is a reading from Amos. Hear this, you that tremble on the needy and bring to ruin the poor of the land, saying, When will the new moon be over so that we may sell grain and, and the Sabbath, so that we may offer wheat for sale? We will make the ephah as small and the shekel great and practice deceit with false balances, buying the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals, and selling the sweepings of the wheat. <clears throat> the Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their deeds. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We'll read the psalm responsively. Hallelujah, give praise you servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be blessed from this time forth forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its going down, let the name of the Lord be praised. The Lord is high above all nations, God's glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord of Lord our God, who sits enthroned on high? 
The Lord takes up the weak out of the dust and lifts up the poor from the ashes. Enthroning them with the rulers, with the rulers of the people. The Lord makes the woman of a, of a childless house be a joyful mother of children. Hallelujah. The second reading, a reading from Timothy. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and for and all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all go- godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of our God, our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, there is also one mediator between God and humankind, Christ Jesus, himself human, who gave himself a ransom for all. This was attested at the right time. For this I was appointed a herald and an, and an apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus said to the disciples, There was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So he summoned him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Give me an accounting of your management, because you cannot be my manager any longer. Then the manager said to himself, What will I do? Now that my master is taking the position away from me, I'm not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do, so that when I am dismissed as manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So summoning the master's debtors one by one, he asked the first, how much do you owe my master? And he answered, a quick, a, a, a hundred jugs of olive oil. And he said to him, take your bill, sit down quickly and, and make it fifty. And then he asked another, How much do you owe? And he replied, A hundred containers of wheat. And he said to him, Take your bill and make it eighty. And his master commended the dishonest manager because he acted shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth, so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes." Whoever is faithful in a a very little is faithful also in much, and whoever is dishonest in a very little is dishonest also in much. Then if you have not been faithful with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust you to the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is their own? No slave can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. And the kids can come up for the children's sermon. If I can sit with dignity, here we go. I got a good one for you today. It's called Dragons Love Tacos. Who likes tacos? Gatlin does, don't you? Do you like tacos? Mm hmm. 
Hey, kid, did you know dragons love tacos? They love beef tacos and chicken tacos. They love really gigantic tacos and tiny little baby taco ones as well. Why do dragons love tacos? Maybe it's the smell from the sizzling pan. Maybe it's the crunch of the crispy tortillas. Maybe it's a secret. Either way, if you want to make friends with dragons, tacos are key. Hey, dragon, why do you guys, why do you guys love tacos so much? But wait, as much as dragons like tacos, they hate spicy salsa even more. They hate spicy green salsa and spicy red salsa. They hate spicy chunky salsa and spicy smooth salsa. That's really hard. There's way too many S's in there. If the salsa is spicy at all, dragons can't stand it. Why do dragons hate spicy salsa? Well, just one drop of hot sauce makes a dragon's ears smoke. One single speck of hot pepper make, makes a dragon snort sparks. Again with the S's. Spicy salsa gives dragons the tummy troubles. And when dragons get, tr and when dragons get tummy troubles, oh boy. So if you want to make tacos for dragons, keep the toppings mild. Tomatoes, lettuce, cheese. These are all good toppings for tacos. Hey, dragon, how do you feel about spicy taco toppings? What's he doing? Uh, he's flying. He's like, Ugh. I'd never be a dragon. Dragons love parties. They like costume parties and pool parties. Remember we talked about pool parties last time? They like big, gigantic parties with accordions, huh? Little tiny parties with charades. Why do dragons love parties? Maybe it's the conversation. Maybe it's the dancing. Maybe it's the comforting sound of a good friend's laughter. The only thing dragons love more than parties or tacos are taco parties. Taco Tuesdays, right. If you want, oh, I love Taco Tuesday. If you want to have some dragons over for a taco party, you'll need a bucket of tacos, a pant load of tacos. The best way to judge is to get a boat and fill the boat with tacos. That's about how many tacos dragons need for a taco party. After all, dragons love tacos. A hundred boats? Okay, well, you can plan that. All right, you go right ahead. Hey, dragon, are you excited for the next big taco party? Look at he marked it on his calendar. He's invited. Taco party for dragons. Ooh, how many, how many tacos are in this house? Thousands. Thousands. Just remember, dragons hate spicy salsa. Before you host your taco party with dragons, get rid of all the spicy salsa. In fact, bury the spicy salsa in the backyard so the dragons can't find it. Look, he's burying it. What do you think will happen if the dragons find it? They'll eat it and then they'll probably do something weird, right? These dragons love your taco party. They love the music. They love the decorations. They love the tacos. Congratulations. Look at they're having a good time. What does it say in his t-shirt? I love tacos. Oh, I, sh I had a taco t-shirt. I should have worn that today. It says, it says on there, do you want a taco about Jesus? It's a good thing you got rid of all that spicy. Oh, wait. What are those little green things in the salsa? Didn't you read the fine print? The jar says, totally mild salsa in tiny print, now with spicy jalapeno peppers. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Do not let those dragons eat those tacos. What are they doing? Eating. Crunch, crunch, crunch. <gasps> I don't know if you can see. They're, they're breathing fire. All over. All over the house, burning down the curtains, burning down everything. It's too late. Oh, no. What happened to the house? It's burned. There's nothing left. What's the little boy doing? Oh, no. Uh-oh. But look, look at what the dragons are doing. They're rebuilding the house. Why would dragons help rebuild your house? I don't know. 
Maybe they're good. They're good Samaritans. Maybe they feel bad for wrecking it. Maybe they're just in it for the taco breaks. Oh, so if I want people to do things at St. Mark's, I'll tell them we have tacos. <laughs> but no spicy salsa. After all, dragons love tacos. I love this story. So why do you think I chose to read a book about dragons and tacos today? You don't expect to hear much about dragons and tacos, especially in church, right? You don't expect dragons to eat tacos. But you know what? God does a lot of unexpected things. God tells unexpected stories. God gives us a world where we encounter new and unexpected things. It's where we are different, where we look different. We like different things. I like spicy tacos, but I'm not a dragon. Some like tacos, some don't. Some like spicy, some don't. Some like to cook and share. Some don't cook and share because they can't. God makes life very interesting with all kinds of different things going on. Now, the dragons were told not to eat the spicy salsa, but what did they do? What happened? What did they see when they burned down the house? Nothing. Nothing. There was nothing left. So what did they do? They rebuilt the house. They realized they did something wrong, and they fixed it. And God wants us to do the same. So whenever we make a mistake, we say we're sorry, and we try and fix it. So let's stand in our circle. We'll have our prayer. There we go. Well, we'll get Tate maybe next week. So repeat after me. Good morning, God. Good morning, God. Thank you for today. Thank you for today. Thank you for the world you gave us. Thank you for the world you gave us. Help us to fix things. Help us to fix things. Whenever we do wrong. And make the world. A better place. We pray in Jesus' name. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Guess what I want for lunch today? <laughs> yes, well, there's a story behind that. So, who wants to leave confused today? Confused sermon-wise, I mean. Today's gospel reading, for most biblical scholars and preachers, and myself included, have a really difficult time with the parable of the shrewd manager. One biblical scholar says, Luke doesn't even know what to do with this text. One of my Bibles, the footnote says about this, This parable defies any fully satisfactory explanation. Another Bible that I have has no footnotes at all on this story. And I'm supposed to preach on it. And to be honest, I didn't want to. If I had hair in my head, I would have pulled it out, trying to figure out how to preach on this. See my desk? Those are books and commentaries trying to figure out what in the world I'm going to say, and nobody knows. But at the same time, I couldn't get away from this text. It kept nagging me to come back to it. It wouldn't let me walk away. So I'm going to let you in on why this parable is so puzzling and defies interpretation. So Jesus tells us a story about a manager who's accused of squandering or wasting his master's property and wealth. You can't be my manager anymore, the master says. I need to audit your books. And the manager freaks out. It's like, what am I going to do? This is all I know. So he comes up with a plan. He's going to collect what is owed to his master, but at a lower amount. 
And hopefully that should balance the books and create new alliances. But I have some questions. Was this adjusted amount the original amount owed? Had the manager been overcharging the debtors and pocketing it for himself? Or was the master making the manager overcharge the debtors? Maybe the manager was adding his own collection fee on top of the master's extra fee. We don't know for sure, but we do know the master commends the manager for his clever approach in collecting debts. No interest, no collection fees, but the principal was collected. So if the manager was indeed in need of a new job and a new master, his collecting methods gained him new friends and alliances. He must have been watching Survivor. If the master is going to trust those indebted to him with timely repayments, he knew ethical business practices were probably best. Because after all, Jewish law prohibited charging interest. But here's the kicker for me. Jesus says this in verse 9. Make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth, so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. Jesus can't be saying, make friends through dishonest methods, can he? I mean, it kind of sounds like it. Maybe. No, wait, I could be reading something into this. Maybe Jesus is saying, change what has been done dishonestly in the first place and turn it into something honest? He doesn't explicitly say that, but if that's the case, where is the confession of wrongdoing by the manager? Where is the forgiveness and reconciliation between the master and the debtors? Or the, master, or the manager and the debtors? Or the master and the manager? Has honest and genuine justice been done? Something else must be going on. But what is it? This, this parable is so infuriating. That's why my desk looked like that. The point of a parable is to make us ask questions. Questions like, how do we live together in community? How do we determine what really matters? How do we live the life God wants us to live? Parables provoke us, challenge us, maybe even inspire us. Parables like ours today, especially challenging ones, make us use our brains. They won't let us give up and walk away. So maybe, look out, there's lots of maybes coming up. Maybe one point of this parable is that there are no simple cut and dry answers. That's because life is complex. There's a lot of gray areas, and sometimes it's so complex, there's no gray areas, it's all gone plaid. Maybe Jesus is making me use my brain today. Maybe I'm being led into a plaid area of life in this parable. Maybe Jesus left us holes in this story so that I can identify what is missing, like the lack of confession and repentance leading toward reconciliation between the master manager and the debtors. When I actually encounter a plaid area of life, and I seem to have been quite a bit lately as a pastor, I realize there are no simple answers to life questions. And I'm okay with that. Then I can ask myself these three parable questions again in that complicated, complex life I'm, I'm encountering. How can we live together in community? What really matters here? How does God want us to live? So I'm purposely, I am not, pur- oh, let, me, let me rephrase this, I am not purposely trying to confuse you or leave you hanging. Instead, I want you to be okay with a parable like this nag you. Let it challenge you. Let it poke at you. Let it inspire you. Maybe even convict you. And you may be surprised at what Jesus reveals to you at the end. It's God's way of loving, forgiving, and saving and bringing us back together with each other in the end and with God. Amen.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. God our Savior, you keep your church in faith and truth. Accompany those preparing for baptism or affirmation of baptism. Enlighten preachers, teachers, seminarians, and all those who share the good news with the world. God of grace, divine teacher, you instruct your children to be responsible stewards of your creation. Show us how best to care for the earth and its resources. Be with and guide those who prepare for the season's harvest. God of grace, Hear our ruler of the nations, you direct those in authority. Give leaders wisdom and compassion so that all may live in peace. Inspire public servants to follow the example of courageous leaders and safeguard the dignity of each person. God of grace, Hear our helper of the needy, you lift up those who are oppressed. Breathe life where there is poverty and hunger. Sustain food ministries, clothing banks, and emergency shelters. God of grace. Sustainer and giver of life. Bless and comfort those in need of your healing touch, especially Vicki Achenbach, Ruth Ann Grimm, Jean Schroeder, Beth McAprang, Ken Carlo, and Patrick Kester. And for those celebrating birthdays this week, Stephanie Johnson, Stephanie. Vernon Broders, Vernon. Peggy Falk, Peggy. Doug Potoshnik, Doug. Michaela Hochstein, Michaela. God of grace, God of glory, you gather your saints around your throne. Keep us thankful for the witness of those who have gone before us and bring us with them to the heavenly feast that has no end. God of grace, gather together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Share a sign of peace with those around you. Turn to page 180 in your Cranberry Hymnal for the Liturgy. Page 180. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places 
Give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church and earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. The holy, holy Lord God, God of might and power, holy is the Lord. Holy, 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 holy Lord God, God of might and power, holy is the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna here on earth. Blessed is he comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna here on earth. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are indeed holy and almighty, merciful God. You are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for this coming into the world, to fulfill us your holy will, and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, almighty God, not as we ought, but as we are able. And we ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in this body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be formed to live as your holy people, and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O Father, God, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Brothers and sisters in Christ, here is bread, here is wine, here is Jesus. Come, taste, and see. You may be seated.
Please stand if you're able. And may the abiding blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you, preserve you, and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now may the God, the source of glory, God, the word of life, God, the spirit of truth, bless you all, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Love your neighbor. Thanks be to God.